Chairman, board members, thanks for having me here. Uh, you should have an audit presentation in front of you, and I'll kind of walk you through that. Great. Um, first off, the audit went very well. That's not to say we didn't have some 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 recommendations or some items that we noted, but we felt like the audit went very well, particularly given that you you merged your school board with the, the city school board this past year. Uh, so we're really pleased with how, how it turned out. You did receive what we call an unqualified or unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which means we believe they are materially correct. <clears throat> if you flip to page one in the handout, I'll kind of go over the financial, really the, uh, the general fund, if you will, activity for the county. Uh, you can see up at the top, uh, we've got 2023, you ended the year with about $38 million in revenue. That's an annualized growth rate of 2.42%. I will tell you that in years past, you've had some school sales tax that was deposited into the general fund and then went to the school board directly. It just basically, you were a pass-through. That was about $3 million. Uh, if we were to, and, and that did not happen this year since it went directly to the school board. Um, so if we'd taken that out, actually that annual, those annualized growth rates would have been a little bit, a little bit north of 3%. Uh, same with expenditures. You see it's 1.87%. It's the annualized growth rate spent just under $40 million this year. Uh, it would have been closer to about 2.6, 2.7% if that $3 million had shown is an in and out this year as it has in prior years. Uh, again, in both those cases, I think revenue growth, it's not, it's not tremendous by any stretch of the imagination. Expenditures are being held, held in check pretty well. Annual growth rate of anything less than 3% is pretty impressive. Don't know if you're going to be able to keep that up with the inflation that we've had, um, but certainly in, in the past 10 years, this look back period, you've done a good job. Ending fund balance at the end of the year was just just over $20 million. Of that amount, about $14.5 million is unassigned, basically reserves, if you will. When I say unassigned, I mean other dollars up to that $20 million above 14 and a half has been assigned for construction projects or has been legally restricted for some, some specific purpose. Uh, so again, about $14.5 million is unassigned. And the rule of thumb that we used to, used to have in terms of how much unassigned fund balance do you need, we take the school board's budget plus your budget, subtract the transfer between the two and take 10% of that, and we'd say that's about the minimum unassigned fund balance you ought to have. In Allegheny County, that'd be about $8 million, $9 million, somewhere in that range. Since we don't have a school board anymore, we're probably safe for just saying about 20% of your annual budget is going to be a good, good amount to have as a reserve. So if you look at a $40 million budget, um, probably ought to have 20% as a minimal reserve in place, which you do. You have $14.5 million in unassigned. And a lot of that was driven by the contribution back from the school board. Uh, of those capital funds uh, year before last. That's so. a and that's a one-time deal. That's right. That was about $6 million. If you took the $16 million out of the $14.5 million, you'd be right at that 20% or so threshold. So, again, that was a one-time deal. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, page two. I'm just graphing out some of this information so you can kind of get a visual on it. Uh, that second line, the green line, you see it kind of spike up and then it goes back down. That's where the $3 million that normally passed through the county and went to the school board was showing up. If we, took, if we were to put $3 million back into that, you'd see that number would be about $10.2 million at, at, for 23. So it would have been flat kind of compared to 2022. And I guess just graphing out your major revenue sources here. Um, I will tell you that in federal aid, that's a line that you kind of see spike up near the bottom. It's a third line down if you're looking at 21 and 22. Of course, that's your... CARES Act and your ARPA funds and all that, those federal dollars, uh, I think you spent about $680,000 worth of that money this year. That's still inflated what we expect to see, what we saw after the Great Recession. You get this big inflow of federal funding, the school board does too, and then it goes flat. And in fact, it takes a long time to get back to where it was. So that's what we expect to see post, post COVID. General fund expenditures, page three. I'm just graphing out this information that was on page one. Uh, the dip that you see in, in education, that's all to do with the $3 million again. We took that, rev that revenue out of your revenues. We took the expense out of your expenses. Uh, and that money goes directly to the school board this year. Um, so if we had not taken that out, that number, that orange line at the top would have, uh, 
would have terminated about $12.2 million, uh, slightly down from the prior year of $12.6 million <coughs> in terms of a contribution to the school board. On page four, reassess, well, I say the original tax assessments, just giving you some historical information here. I believe you're getting ready to go into a reassessment year. You're on a six-year cycle, if my notes were right, before I left the office. Um, you can see we haven't had a whole lot of growth in those, those assessed values. That could very well change um, come 2025 when the new assessments um, become effective. Uh, we, we could see a pretty good jump. What we're hearing from other places is they're seeing a pretty large increase in their real estate assessments, so, um, which I think is, is, is a good thing. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to know a little bit about, more about that next year. Public service corporations, so that's going to be power companies, uh, gas, rail, that sort of thing. The next page. Been trending down. Yeah, the state assesses those, makes those assessments. Um, so the last couple of years, and I want to say you may have had a, a big, uh, AEP had a lot of projects going on in 2018, 2019 that drove up the value of their infrastructure. Uh, and then they depreciate it over time. Uh, so that could be why they're going back down. But we really don't get into those assessments a lot because the state just provides them. It's kind of a matter of fact sort of. Uh, assessment that the county gets and then they assess taxes on those assessments that have been provided. So the county doesn't go out and make those assessments at all. It's just provided directly by the state. The next page, page five, I'm just graphing out some information for you. Um, primarily fund balance and then long-term <laughs> obligations or long-term debt. It's long-term debt and long-term obligation which includes pension liabilities. You can look at the graph and kind of tell when the pandemic started. Those, those lines go all over the place. The key thing to pick out here is that blue line. You can see that trended up to 2022. That's the general fund balance. Kind of settled back down in 23. The purple line, that's school board debt. I included them in this analysis just because on a per capita basis, the state doesn't provide us with any information for just counties and just school boards. Uh, so I included them so you'd have some idea of how you compared per capita to, to, to counties around the state. Um, and what you can see there is you kind of drop down in the school board debt obligations, primarily a drop in their pension liabilities. And then when Covington came on, uh, those liabilities went back up. Long-term debt for the county, you can see it's about $13 million. Um, that's that's second lowest year in this look back period. Uh, for water and sewer, it's under $10 million for the first time in 10 years. Um, so those, those debts have been trending down on a per capita basis. Of course, we had to jump up with school board debt this year because of the consolidation or the merger, I should say. Uh, on a per capita basis, you're at 3157. That includes school board debt compared to state average for counties of 6545. So you're well below the state average, but the only thing I would caution you is that Northern Virginia tends to drive that average up a little bit higher. So in more rural places, 4,000 is probably a better average than that 6,500. The next couple pages are letters to those charged with governance. If we came in to do an audit and your folks didn't provide us with documents or they were um, withholding information from us. We'd report it to you here. We don't have anything like that to report. Like I said, the audit went very well. We do tell you about some of the key estimates, the financial statements, your pension liabilities, those are estimates. We don't know once someone leaves how long they're going to stay in the, in the retirement system. Um, and ultimately, you're going to have to pick up that tab for those employees. So it does tell you about some of the major estimates in the financial statements. And, that, and we also include our adjusting entries for the county and the school board along with this letter, our recommended adjusting entries, and really did not have that many this year. Like I said, we were, we were pleasantly surprised. I shouldn't say surprised. We were happy that uh, it went, it, the audit went pretty well. <clears throat> and the last couple pages, page 16 and 17, are our audit recommendations from the audit. Nothing major here. The one thing, you've had some turnover in the social services department, and we want to make sure they're getting their reconciliations. They submit every month, they submit a, rec a report to the state on how much they've spent, and they get a reimbursement, or the county gets a reimbursement based on that. We 
they kind of slowed down a little bit in getting those reconciliations done uh, to make sure you've reported everything. So we want to make sure they get back on track and uh, make sure what they're requesting from the state is actually what they've spent and they're not under-reporting or over-reporting their expenditures to the state. Uh, in, in, in my tenure, I've seen folks under-report their expenditures more often than over-report. Uh, so we want to make sure you're getting every dollar back that you can for the state. That's, that's the, probably the most important comment in these two pages. And I'll stop there. I felt like I went kind of kind of quickly, but I'll stop there to try to answer any any questions that you might have. Several years ago, you were here and said that municipalities were almost going to be given, for lack of a better term, like a beacon score for bond ratings or or bond purchases and you know different things. Is that still or? Is, has that been implemented, or is that how counties are looked at or cities are looked at? Now? Oh, oh, no. no. Um, with the pool programs, yes. Uh, so if you go through a VRA or a, a VPSA for the school board, that's a pool program, and they wind up getting the state's rating effectively. Um, so, but yeah, so if you wanted to do a, what they call a standalone issue or, or a, I guess, really a, almost a direct placement, then you'd have to go get your own bond rating. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that wouldn't be a, they would look at you specifically to try to determine. I just wondered how we would stack up. Uh, I, I think just because of your size, you probably wouldn't do as well as what you should do. Um, because they're going to not just look at what kind of financial condition you're in, and I think you're in, in good financial condition. Um, they're going to look at your capacity, um, you know, how large you are. Um, so that that's going to come into play as well. There's I used to have the uh, all the all the various formulas that they put together uh, to try to rate you. Uh, but then once they do all of that, the bond rating agencies once they do all that, it kind of becomes subjective at the end. Um, so they they do all they go through all the gyrations and they give you what they want to give you. So, but yeah, and I think I think for the most part the pool programs make a lot of sense for Allegheny County and school board. When you guys are issuing debt, typically you're getting a um, a lower interest rate because the state's rating is typically going to be higher than what you would be able to get on your own. I won't say always, but, but typically. That's a good question. That's a big. I'd like to thank the board for working continuously to look well on our financial statements. I think it, a lot of effort goes into fiscal responsibility. Of, Having of done this audit for a number of years, uh, this board always is, is pretty, I don't want to say tight on the expenditure side, but controlled is probably a better word. Uh, but, you know, when you've got expenditure growing at 2% or 2.5% a year, that, that's pretty good. So. We have always been very conservative. You have to be when you're our size. We don't have that potential. Any other board member questions or comments? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My contact information is on the front page. And I, anytime you got a call, you know, you got a question, call me or email me. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. And I tell you this every year. I think don't worry about getting a bill the next day because we're, we're here to serve. You. So, <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you.